Minister, yesterday I met with Home Health in Cork, and I'm sure you're very familiar with many of the women that I spoke to yesterday, because I'm sure that you know them personally um, through your own contact in the constituency, as well as through your own role within the department. And you know as well as I do the issues facing some of those home helps in Cork, and some of the um, decisions that they are now being faced with. I mean, I spoke to one home home help yesterday where she is now put in an awful position where when she visits the elderly lady that she cares for, she has 15 minutes. And because she has to get to another uh, patient within a certain time frame, she can spend no more than those 15 minutes. And if you look at even the whole area of mental health, was one area that this home health brought up. And when she was talking about it, you know, it really hit home. You have an elderly lady who is living on her own, who is isolated from one end of the day to the other, from one week to the next, from month to month and year to year. And the only contact that lady has is with her home health. Is with her home health. And that daily contact with her, with her home health goes beyond just the care that she gives. It's also just the fact that she has someone to relate to, somebody to talk to. It's somebody who keeps her in, in good mental condition um, as well as physical condition. And I think that shouldn't be underestimated. I think that, and I, I know it's your area of responsibility, um, Minister, but I, I, I'm actually disappointed that the senior minister is not here tonight to listen to this debate because I think that he should be here. I think it's important that the senior minister in the department has, as we have seen from the whole area of primary care debacle over the last few weeks, is ultimately the person who calls uh, the shots in terms of what happens within the department. And I think it's a pity he's not here to listen to the debate. Um, and while we can talk about the figures of 1.7 being cut from home care packages and 8 million being cut from home health packages, we're not just talking about figures, we're talking about people. We're talking about people who are vulnerable in our, in our society. And I know, Minister, you know this as well as I do, you know a lot of the people in our constituency, we share the same constituency, who rely on home health services. You know the value that carers and home healths are given to the most elderly and vulnerable people on the north side of Cork City. And how any government and how you, Minister, can even stand over cuts of that nature. It, 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 I just don't, I, I can't understand it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not being political here now because I know your record in terms of standing up for home helps in the past. And that's why it's even just more puzzling to me why you, with the primary responsibility for this, can stand over cuts of this nature despite it being a commitment in the programme of government to actually increase the services going into this area. And, and maybe in your own contribution you will outline the reasons why the programme for government commitment is not being met and why it's actually being um, reversed. In the final few minutes that I have, I want to just speak of the personal um, nature of Home Helps. And you know, Minister, that I lost my father seven weeks ago today. He had motor neurons. And he had, a, he had a home help for the last two years of his life. And the compassion that that individual showed to our family, it, it was priceless. You, you cannot put a figure on it. They came in every day. They helped us wash my dad change him, paralyze from the neck down, and um, things that which were really emotionally draining for us as a family, that home help came in. And not only did it, but did it with a smile, did it with a sense of, it wasn't even a job to him, it, it, they did it because they cared about what they did. And, you know, really at a time when we needed every support as a family. The home help, Sinead, who came in to us, was really a friend to my dad. 
and I, you know, our family could never repay the kindness that the Home Helps showed to, to my dad in his, in his final months. I remember when my dad was diagnosed, he had one wish, and that was to be able to pass away peacefully at home. And we knew that with his condition and how quickly he would deteriorate and the symptoms and just the fact that in the final months he would be in such need of 24-hour care seven days a week, that it was going to be impossible unless we had the help and support of outside people like the Morton Orans Association or our Home Helps or Marymount. And only for those people coming in and supporting our family, we could not have granted my father his dying wish. And that is what we're talking about when we're talking about Home Helps. We're not talking about somebody that just goes in and puts on a kettle and sits down for five minutes and has a chat with somebody. We're talking about people who have to see and who have to care for some of our most sick and vulnerable people in society. And they do it with a smile on their face. They did it for years for very little money, for nothing. They did it because they have a vocation and they have a passion for it. And now we are repaying those people by cutting their hours, by not giving them any security of income, by not honouring contracts. It's an absolute disgrace, an absolute disgrace. And I just cannot get over the fact that as a society, we are leaving a group of people, and I'm talking about the Home Helps themselves now, we are leaving a group of people who have the commitment, the compassion, the experience to just fall away by the wayside, and we're not fighting for them. Every single deputy in this house should be fighting on their behalf. There should be no opposition to this motion here before the chamber tonight, none whatsoever. Because I, I, I just can't get over the fact that I was able to, and my family was able to grant my dad his dying wish with the help of a home help. But there is another family out there who are facing the same challenges that we faced as a family over the last number of months. And they may not be able to grant their father or their mother their dying wish to die in peace at home because they may not be able to get the same care and attention and love that we got from our home help for their parents because we'll have 8 million cut from the budget. How much is going to be cut again next year or the year after? When is enough enough? We are talking about people's lives. We are talking about people's dignity. We are talking about people's right, and it should be a right, to be able to stay in their own home. And I, I, I just think that everyone on the government benches needs to take a long, hard look at themselves before they press a button tomorrow night. Because if they come in here and vote against this motion, they are condemning people to death, in my opinion, because that's what will happen to a lot of these people. They will die of loneliness, they will die of isolation, and I just think it's an absolute disgrace. And I think that every single deputy in here should be out there fighting on behalf of the most vulnerable in the society and standing up for the home helps and the carers who look after them. Because we are going to be in that position someday. Both you and me, Minister, are going to be relying on some of those people eventually. And we would be very, very silly to be undervaluing the contribution that they make to society. And I just don't think it's fair on them. Thank you, Deputy.